Okay, on to the um, DO meters. We've got several different types of um, DO meters. These ones are the most recent, the 550A. Uh, they're quite simple to use, but the important thing with the DO meters is you must calibrate them each time you go out. Um, the first thing you want to do is check that the membrane on them looks okay. So you take this off, have a look, check to see if there's any bubbles under the membrane or if there's anything growing on it. Um, make sure it looks fairly clean, this one isn't too bad. It should be slightly damp from being in the chamber here, there should be a sponge in this chamber. So you should always put, it, put the probe back in here. Okay, so when you turn it on, it'll come up with the startup screen. Uh, you've got several modes. It'll give you the oxygen measurements in milligrams per litre. Uh, it'll give you salinity because of course salinity uh, affects the DO reading. You don't generally have to worry about that unless you're in an estuarine or a um, saltwater environment. Um, just generally, you want to leave the salinity at about 0.1. Uh, but if, if you're working in salt water or, um, or restaurant environments with salinities higher, you're going to need to adjust that salinity to get the correct DO reading. Um, and of course it will give you uh, percentage DO. So this, when you turn on, should be around about 100% for air. It will also give you the temperature, because temperature of course is a critical factor when you're taking DO measurements. Um, to calibrate it, uh, hold down these two buttons and the cowl will come up. And no. Brian, about the temperature um, when you're taking it, do you, is there some sort of calculation you have to make um, between the uh, oxygen reading and the temperature? Uh, when you're working out your oxygen concentrations? Uh, or can you just take it? No, because you'll need to know, because this will give you temperature, yeah. so you'll need to know what temp the temperature at which you took the measurement. Okay, so it's, it's more about keeping it in a temperature stable environment, or, or, as, quite, <coughs> or, or as relatively close as possible, is, is that right? No, because you need, where, wherever you measure it, so when you're going to be taking te the, the temperature between, say, winter and summer, uh, you can take percentage DO, Oh, the percentage of saturation, so 100% would be saturated. And so you, what, what may be 20 degrees in the summer and saturated will be a different level in terms of milligrams per litre between, say, 10 degrees and saturated on okay. the winter. Yep. Okay, so you need to be able to recognise those differences when you, you do your data analysis. Right. The, the unit, that unit should report milligrams per litre as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, should, you should be recording both milligrams, milligrams per litre and percentage. But to get, okay. to, to get percentage, it has an, an algorithm embedded in it okay. to, to take temperature and salinity yep. and, and, and take the reading relative to 100%. So that's why you calibrate it? Just um, one point. Is the, the percent saturation is actually relative to barometric pressure as well. So if you calibrate it in a lab and then get 500 metres up the hill for the DO readings, your calibration will be worthless. So you need to calibrate on site at field pressure. Yeah, so this is why you need to calibrate it with at, the, at the site that you do it. Yes, sir, so you just use these buttons to go up and down to calibrate it. So for if you want to change the salinity, you can just up and down <coughs> uh, mode to change um, what's um, appearing with the uh, percentage oxygen or salinity. Uh, all the instructions for it are actually on here, so they should be really um, easy to follow. Um, what you should be doing, um, before you take it out in the field, you probably just want to uh, get some tap water, uh, make sure it's well oxygenated, so give it a bit of a shake, and make sure you're getting a reading of about 100% and that it's fairly stable. 
uh, what happens was, is that sometimes people just um, grab the um, bag, take it out in the field, and then they find that when they're taking the measurements that it's drifting all over the place. And that's probably a sign that the um, membrane needs changing. And if you're out in the field, it's a real pain to change the membrane out in the field. So you want to be doing that uh, in the lab, ideally with the help of a technician to, to get that right. So, so in the lab, you want to be make, making sure that your readings are fairly stable, that they're not drifting, say, 10 or, or even 5%. With those within a couple of percent, it would be fine for the oxygen. So just make sure it's giving you some stable readings before you take it out in the field. Otherwise, you can have all sorts of problems. So have we got some uh, like barometers we can take out? Yep, there's a barometer in uh, the lab. Uh, this one doesn't actually work on atmospheric pressure, it works on height. Yeah. So it's assuming that the, there's an average atmospheric pressure of 760 millimetres of mercury, and that, that's going to be the average. Um, what it will throw off is, say, if you get a very high pressure zone coming over, or a very low pressure zone uh, in the weather, that you should try and estimate how much that's going to affect the, the atmospheric pressure and compensate that in terms of height. But I wouldn't worry too much about it for, for this. But for the sonde? For the sonde, it's different. It, the sonde works, uh, is a bit more accurate and is working on uh, yeah, the barometric pressure. So if we have to do it in a field like Christie's, we've got a barometer to take out. You, you, um, you can, if you know the, the elevation where you're taking your sample, you can work it out afterwards. Yeah. So all it is is scaling you. Yeah. measurement by a certain amount. Yeah. Like at about 300 metres elevation, your 100% would be equivalent to like 96.5. So, so you don't need to worry about it for sort of local things. Here we're about 40 metres above sea level if you take them out to measure the, the local conditions, the local um, lakes, then you're probably going to be fine. We would have, have a problem is if you were um, calibrating it here and taking it to say Taupo, then your measurement probably going to be off and you'll need to, to compensate them then. So it's just a matter of, of altitude with, with these ones. Isn't that altitude and inspection that? Yeah. 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 So you can just so have some idea yeah. of the altitude where they be and further conversion to measure. Yeah, I tried not to make this too complicated. Um, we've already got yeah. a limited amount of time. Okay, the next uh, one thing I should have mentioned with the uh, with with the DO thing is that the, the membrane uses up oxygen when you're taking the measurement, so therefore it's critical that the probe to have some sort of water flow over it when you're taking the measurement. If you just leave it there and still water, it's going to use up all the local oxygen, and you're going to get a lower reading than what you thought. So you need a reasonable flow of water, whether that means it's stream water movement moving past it or you, you're sort of moving the probe backwards and forwards. That'll help um, improve the accuracy of it. 